Not far from the metropolis, with no need to drive hundreds of kilometers in the direction of Bila Tsarkva, a luxurious palace park will appear in front of you. Just some 200 to 300 years ago, this was a place of oak forest, alternating with steppe areas. Local landscapes captivated with their exceptional beauty and purity of nature. By imitating it and noticing the small details in its style, man created his own masterpiece. The English-style park with endless shady alleys, cascades of lakes, waterfall sounds and wonderful plants, some amazing with their power and grandeur, others with sophisticated forms and exotic appearance. At the end of the 18th century, these lands of the Bila Tsarkva eldership were in possession of the Polish hetman Brunitsky. High life was blooming here, 20 kilometers of alleys diverging into different ends of the 400 hectares of park space, where each path and every glade were supposed to surprise noble guests. The park named after the hetman's wife, Alexandria, still remains the largest and most majestic arboretum of Ukraine. Alexandria Arboretum has a rich history. It starts at the end of the 18th century. 1788 is considered the year of the foundation of the park. It was inspired by Alexandra Brunitska. Most parks of the 18th to 19th centuries were created on complex terrain with the obligatory presence of ponds, ravines and hilly terrain. Alexandria is one of those parks. The location for its establishment was chosen completely by accident. At the time, the Perniskis were building a hotel in the country, or as it was called back then, an Osteria. Once during an inspection, Alexandra got out of the carriage and saw unusual terrain, crossed by three deep ravens. Then the Bronitskis changed their plans, rebuilt the Osteria as a summer palace, and founded a park. To help the natural beauty of this place to reach artistic completeness, the famous French park architect Maffo started working on it. The gardener mostly took care of landscape gardening that consisted mostly of exotic plants. Through the efforts of Augustus Enns, Alexandria turned into a real landscape park. He spent over 50 years painstakingly picking, planting, and then looking after plants. The park became the work of his life. Like many parks in Ukraine, Alexandria was based on a natural oak forest. The forest occupies roughly 40 hectares of land, and there are more than 2,000 oaks over 200 years old here. This oak forest is unique. There are no more of such old and at the same time pure oak plantations anywhere in Ukraine. At the time of the creation of Alexandria, this was the most heavily forested part of the park. There was a special atmosphere of comfort and peace in the shade under the crowns of the ancient giants. But the value of this land, of untouched nature, does not diminish the merits of what man has created in Alexandria at all. Each tree and bush on the big glade, about 100 species, were planted with caring hands of the park workers. We're in the center of the park right now, and right before us is the largest glade, not just in our park, but among all the parks. Its size is about 10 hectares. By going around it, we will walk 2 kilometers. The endless plain covered by dense grass is slightly inclined towards the Ross River. Separate ancient trees and separate groups of them tower over it, placed so well that the unique beauty and grandeur of numerous landscapes opens up from any side of the glade. The ample supply of water helps the various flourishing plants to grow and smell. 
Numerous lakes are also a decoration of Alexandria. Swan Lake, Cold Lake, Mirror Lake, Mermaid Lake. Each of them is beautiful in its own way, and all of them change depending on the time of the year. The lush beach vegetation hides many streams, springs, and small waterfalls. There are a lot of springs in the park. The water in them is cool, tasty and has healing properties because it contains a lot of radon. It is also warm. It does not freeze even in the coldest winters. Numerous springs combine into streams that fall from small and large waterfalls with their ringing sound. An English-style park is impossible to imagine without water. Ponds, streams and waterfalls are a mandatory feature of a landscape-style park. 10,000 square meters of Alexandria are covered with lakes and ponds, equally as much is covered by the channel of Ross River. It is all a single engineering system, including waterfalls and fountains. Observing the still surface of the lake, we don't even suspect that this is not standing water. The liquid mirrors are actually moving, flowing from lake to lake and then into the river. If we look at the park from a bird's eye view, we will see that it has the shape of a trapezoid, crossed by three deep ravines. During the construction of the park, these ravines were covered with beams, thus the lake cascade was created. Alexandria Arboretum was created with minimal intervention in the natural landscape. No large-scale earthworks were carried out here with the largest ones aimed at creating lakes in the huge ravines that cross the valley. They chose areas with large height differences and built dams. Thus bowels were created that were quickly filled with spring water and gradually turned into lakes. Located at different heights, they were connected to one another by small waterfalls or small architectural constructions, like the Chinese bridge. In the 17th to 18th century, Europe discovered China with its culture and traditions of tea drinking, which is why we find an element of Chinese culture in every park of that time. Our park also has one. At the time of Branitsky, the upper part was wooden, but it was almost completely destroyed during the war. Only the stone foundation remained. It was restored in the 60s of the 20th century. Now it is a light open-work gazebo with a curved roof, created in the spirit of the architecture of Southeast Asia. In front of the bridge, visitors are greeted by a beautiful Chinese woman and a mysterious sage, who cast romantic moods to the accompaniment of bubbling streams. Swans and wild ducks gliding along the water surface create a special atmosphere of peace and comfort. Just like 200 years ago, life is flourishing here, as its source doesn't dry out. Numerous ponds, streams and waterfalls quench these lands, encouraging the diversity of local and exotic plants. When building the park, the mistress of the Bronitsky residence needed the advice of landscape architects. She picked and ordered plants from abroad herself. In one of the letters to her eldest son, she wrote, when you go visit in Countess Radziwill, bring a piece of Italian honeysuckle. I really do like it very much. So a lot of exotic plants, not characteristic of this area, right bank forest step of Ukraine, remain here from the time of the Branitskis. Just native plant species were not enough to add sophistication and originality to the park. The local flora was not particularly rich. The aftermath of the three glaciers that swept through the territory of Ukraine, crushing everything in their path, had to be eliminated with the help of exotic plants. The local climatic conditions turned out suitable for North American and Far Eastern species. Visitors of the park still admire 
how the oldest tulip tree in Ukraine blooms. Out of 4,500 plants in the park, 3,000 are trees and most of them are not local. Poplars were among the first exotic trees to be planted. Contemporaries of Alexandra wrote that she did not just create a beautiful park, but was also the first to introduce the locals to Canadian and pyramidal poplars. Unfortunately, the age of poplars is not long. They live 70 to 80 years on average, but they manage to achieve such enormous sizes in their short lives. The 70-year-old gray poplar has already reached about 7 meters in girth. It was among the main plantings in the 50s of the last century, when the park was being restored after the war. Out of the poplars planted by the Braniscus, only one of the aboriginal species was preserved, the black poplar. These poplars are distinguished by their longevity. They live up to 170 years. This particular specimen is 150 years old. Gigantic in size, 7 meters in trunk diameter, and as tall as a 10-story building, the gray poplar is recognized as the largest tree in the park and a rare native here. Most park residents are exotic plants. Even the common pine tree was considered one at the time of the creation of Alexandria. By relocating it, they expanded its area of growth. Individual specimens were assigned the role of an heirloom by gardeners. Bouquet plantings, when several trees take root in one nest, look spectacular. A group of oaks near the dance pavilion was planted this way. With time, the tree trunks in the lower part grew together. At the top, following the expanding crowns, they are as if frozen in an eternal waltz. Thus, they made an image of trees dancing in unison with waltz in couples. This bicentennial giant, who has seen quite a lot in his lifetime, is called the master of the glade of the dancing oaks. We can see the image of this tree in the painting of Velbert Richter of 1828. We can definitely say that it is slightly over 200 years old. The ruins of an ancient castle remind of the transience of life here. This mandatory element of an English-style park was intentionally built in Alexandria. Strong and powerful trees have grown through the walls and ceilings of the ruins, emphasizing the age of the castle, just how old it is. It is one of the most original architectural creations in Alexandria. From this side of the Elasnevi Lake, it looks like an ancient castle with no roof, under which the lower tier can also be seen from the other side. It plays the role of supporting the wall of the dam of Lasnevi Lake, the waters of which run down a noisy waterfall. The composition sets the mood. If time is so merciless with stone, then what exactly are you before time? And are you going to be remembered? This is the purpose of the creation of similar compositions. From the balcony on the second floor of the ruins, there is a picturesque picture of a pond surrounded by lush near water vegetation. Only the chirping of birds and their attempts to get some delicious scraps interrupt the peaceful silence. An equally attractive view on the Ross River opens from the north observation deck. A water surface covered with large heart-shaped leaves of water lilies with a scattering of snow-white flowers. Reed beds with bright dots of swamp iris are swaying in the wind. Like a real painting, you can watch these natural landscapes forever, noticing more and more details and discovering new angles. Travel together with us, explore the undiscovered Ukraine.